Lung Lung, the senior monk in Bangkok that I knew, had many duties. And one of them was as an advisor to a school for novices up country. And he told me one time of one of the novices at the school had a special talent. If you put three dots on a piece of paper, he could connect the dots. Not necessarily staying within the confines of the dots, but with one line, you wouldn't take the pen off the paper. He could draw a picture of you, and the dots would be connected in the picture. And his likenesses apparently were very good. There was even one time when one of the princesses was invited to the school. And they decided to set up a little tent for her with an easel on a piece of paper. And she was told she could put three dots anywhere on the piece of paper, and the novice would draw a picture of her based on those dots. And so she put them in sort of impossible spots in the paper. But sure enough, the novice did a good job. We think about how clever it is. But you begin to realize, so this is how your mind creates its pictures of reality. It gets a few dots, little facts here and there, and then it can connect them in all kinds of ways. And our problem is that after we've connected the dots that way, we take the lines to be really real. We forget where they came from. And sometimes our ways of thinking can drive us crazy, but we're convinced of the reality. And if the Buddha were to come along and say, well, there are other ways you can connect the dots, or maybe the dots are irrelevant, we tend to resist, because our reality is our reality. But you have to remember, it's just a sketch. It's the cartoon. The Buddha is offering us another sketch. We may complain that parts of our paper that are black in his piece of paper are white, and vice versa. But then you have to ask yourself, what's the sketch good for? In his case, he says, there's a way of looking at things that helps free you. Whereas your way of looking at things, even though there may be some truth to those dots, actually ties you down. So it's up to us to decide which sketch we're going to take. Both, both are sketches. The Buddha is not saying that the sketch he's going to have you adopt is the total picture of reality. After all, with the three perceptions, say, how things are in constant stressful, not self. They do have their pleasant side. And you can focus on certain aspects of them and say, well, they follow certain patterns of behavior which are constant. But if you focus on that, what happens? You get attached to these things. Wherever it's, if you look at them as being Inconstant, stressful, not self. The value judgment has to come up. It's not worth it. So as a way of prying yourself loose from your old way of looking at things, the Buddha first has you look at the fact that it is causing you to suffer, and then he has you do something that's called guarding the truth. Whereas you ask yourself, where did I get these ideas? Where do they come from? Why did I adopt them? What purpose did it serve? And do I really want to continue serving that purpose? Sometimes the old sketch supports a very unhealthy sense of self, and it can also be very limiting. So remember, it's not just an attempt to depict reality. 
There are lots of different ways of depicting reality, all of which have their truth. But if it's tying you down, making you miserable, why stick with it? In some cases, it's a lack of imagination. You can't imagine yourself thinking or acting in other ways. And the thinking and acting get into your breath and affect the way your body feels, which gives them more seeming reality. So one way of dealing with these pictures of reality is to go back and turn around and look at your breath. And you breathe in a different way. And as you're breathing in a different way, can you look at the body in a different way? When you read a John Lee's instructions on breath meditation, the sections about the breath energy going through the different parts of the body are really fascinating. And they tend to overshadow another part that's equally important, is the rhythm of your breathing. This is a good time to be taking long breathing or short breathing, or in long, out short, in short, out long, or how long, how short. Sometimes you want to forget about the breath and the different parts of the body. Just focus on the length of the breathing, the rhythm of the breathing. You see if you can get you out of a vicious cycle where the sense of your body confirms your sketch of the world around you. And the sketch of the world around you limits what you can do with the body. Try to find some opening for prying things loose. You may object that the Buddha sketch is also just a sketch. There are a lot of questions he leaves unanswered. There's a lot of Buddhist scholarship over the centuries that tried to fill in all the answers to the questions the Buddha didn't ask. But that was pretty wrong-headed. I mean, there were reasons why he didn't ask those questions. And we look back at some of the questions that are refused to answer in the canon, and they strike us as quaint. But you have to realize, well, what are your questions, the ones you're demanding answers for, that really don't require answers, or that are going to pull you astray? Ask yourself what purpose these questions serve. That's the point of all these sketches. Is they, they're meant to serve a purpose. To make another analogy, they're like maps. Maps, too, are sketches. If a map had all the details of everything in a particular place, you wouldn't be able to use it. It would be just too much clutter. Which one is a map that serves your purpose? Here again, you can take a, draw a map of a particular area. In some cases, you want to draw a map about the different geological layers. In other cases, you want to draw a map about the vegetation. In other cases, it's a map about the roads, about the distribution of animals. Same place, but the drawings would all be very different. And as long as they're serving the purpose that they're intended for, they're perfectly good. But then there are maps that are full of misinformation. Take that Thomas Brothers map, which shows McNally Road connecting to Lilac Road. That's hard to tell why they drew it that way. They may have been misinformed. Or some people say that occasionally the map makers would intentionally put mistakes in the map so they could trace it. people who are copying their maps without getting permission. At any rate, it shows a connection. And when the GPS systems came in, they adopted the Thomas map and try as we might to tell them and know that road does not connect, and it misdirects a lot of people based on that mistake. 
They went back and looked at the Thomas Brothers map, and they said, no, it's perfectly fine. It still causes a lot of trouble for people trying to come to the monastery. So there are good maps and there are bad maps. And the good maps differ because they serve different purposes. What the Buddha is offering is a map that can show you the way out. If you learn how to imagine yourself in that picture of reality, and learn how to let go of some of the things you hold on to very dearly that are very different from the map, then you find that you benefit. So look at your thoughts, look at your ways of thinking, look at your ways of breathing. That you say, well, it's got to be this way, because it's in your map. If it's causing you to suffer, throw out the map. Try the Buddhist map. A lot of people have used it and found that it works. Of course, even his maps, I say, make it plural, his maps have their different variations. You look at the suttas, and some suttas say, say that mindfulness comes before discernment. Others say that discernment comes before mindfulness. So there's a little bit of variation in there. So we're looking at the Buddhist sketchbook when we're looking into the canon. Try to find a sketch that seems to correspond best to what's going on in your mind. And don't be surprised if there are some details missing things that played a huge role in your maps, but are not in the Buddhist map at all. Because he says, okay, those, those issues don't matter. And try to give him the benefit of the doubt. 